Hello and welcome to Mindscapes, our series of conversations with men and women whose ideas, vision and philosophy define our contemporary world. My guest today is one of India's most distinguished artists, a descendant of the third Sikh guru. He has spent much of his time reading the Upanishads and the Quran. He's trained at the art colleges in India and in Europe. His works have been displayed at the galleries of the world. I'm delighted to welcome Manjit Baba. Manjit, as we record this uh, conversation, you're in the middle of a cycle of uh, exhibitions here in Delhi, Calcutta, Bombay, and traveling. Um, do you feel nervous or, 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 or apprehensive? What are your feelings when an exhibition is on your, your window to the world, your work is displayed in a sense? I think uh, day by day, at uh, first I used to not enjoy exhibitions. So once I never did the exhibition for 13 years, there was a lot of work to handle, get them framed, catalog, mm, doing the photography and making the slides. And I thought, why to do all that? I must keep on painting. And I will sell any, any way painting from my studio. Mm -hmm. And they joke on me, which is not true at all. You have to sign on this empty canvas mm -hmm. if you want a painting. And never I did like that. Mm -hmm. And people see the work and they say, when it's finished, please, it's over. Mm -hmm. So there's a comfortable position. Mm -hmm. But uh, I thought, especially uh, my uh, great friend, Mrs. Zina Pui, she said, no, you are trying to be very selfish and uh, let we share our work to other people. They should must enjoy what we are doing. Are you concerned about how the work will be viewed and in the manner in which people will receive it? My work is to keep on working and complete the painting and see that the color should remain okay if I buy it, it should remain intact for 100 years at least, or 50 years, and use best of the material. Where they all come from states or London, and Lynch of all even comes. So you feel you have that um, the gratification, the need that your work should be uh, remembered, acknowledged 50, 100 years from now, or centuries from now. What is it that, that drives you, inspires you to paint? I think uh, differently. Here, yeah, like Tagore, Vindana Tagore, he did kind of doodling works mm -hmm. for himself and he shown his colleagues. And uh, to my mind, nobody knew he was such a serious painter at his time. And now he's one of the most important painter, not for me, but my colleagues also. And uh, I think most important original expressionist painter of his time. And how do we know? what will remain in the history, if it has the strength, it will remain, or it dies sometime before you, or sometime after you, immediately. Mm -hmm. but why this, uh, this consciousness to paint for history, as it were? Uh, why do you paint? What is the, the, the process of gratification for you? One likes to express themselves by talking, by uh, reading you don't express, you uh, gain, or maybe by uh, theater or film, all the media, music, or maybe, and painting for me was only choice. You have, um, you know, been called a, a spiritual painter. Your work has a metaphysical quality to it. Uh, you have uh, an interest in, in the Sufi traditions. You have spent much of t much of your time reading the Upanishads and the Quran. And, and, and your work represents this very contemplative, uh, austere, but yet intense canvas. Um, it sometimes seems almost contradictory, the spiritual tradition, which encourages you to look inward, uh, to sort of, in a sense, um, redefine the need for external expression, because it's really the internal processes that uh, spirituality yeah, it's involves. a very beautiful uh, question, and it's a contradictory also. You, uh, until you express yourself, you learn, you have to learn. And I done a lot of reading once. I started from Beng uh, Hindi to Bangla literature, and then I couldn't read very thick book earlier. Like never, want, never read many, many novels. I read a lot of poetry, and then I 
uh, we read a lot of Bangal literature which is translated and all worlds, you know, short stories. Uh, later on, went to Sufi studies and Pranic studies because they had a very beautiful place in Dhalozi with nobody disturbed, there's no party for years and years. So, uh, I have a lot of time and which is blessing by the God itself that is given me by chance that kind of a, a place and I could do it and it stimulate me and I feel I have a duty as an Indian citizen to add something in my country's uh, life or their need I must do something for the country when you say you want to add something to your to the country uh, what is your what is your sense of the country what is it that defines India, makes India Indian in, a, in that sense. It's a very spiritual country. It's a, it's a, it's a, the air is a kind of very spiritual air, I feel it. Do you still feel that in, 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 in this new millennium with the processes of uh, globalization, with the, the communication technologies, with the pollution, um, with the sectarian violence, with the many aspects that happen? Do you, do you still able to assert the spiritual dimension of Definitely. India? Where does it exist for you? It exists everywhere. It exists everywhere. Do not think only the bigger city or, uh, or the few people who are maybe in power or into some kind of uh, games. They are everywhere. But think of the uh, villages. And uh, villages, uh, more than 70% people live in the villages. And I've seen the people in the cities, you go to Bengal, and you go to other smaller towns, anywhere. The people, they talk about their life, and it's, uh, still they're very spiritual. Don't you think of about Delhi itself. You talk about this aspect of, of spiritual, of the, uh, the Indianness of uh, the political entity that is India. Um, yet that tradition, historically, as far as the arts are concerned, uh, was um, really more imitative art. Uh, it wasn't the kind of um, intuitive art uh, that uh, you practice and represents contemporary art. Um, it really was largely derived from the religious traditions. It tended to duplicate, it tended to replicate what was already there. Um, how have you reconciled this aspect of our traditional ancient approach to art in the more contemporary more innovative. Uh... One thing I feel that like our thoughts uh, in Hindu philosophy are international now. It wasn't earlier. You know, people thought we are just a primitive society and it took time for the world to realize it's a greatest philosophy among the other philosophies. I'm not talking about our philosophy is the greatest and also our Art was not taken seriously earlier because they thought we don't have anatomy, we don't have don't know perspective when the British had came. And and they realized now that Raja is one of the greatest sculptures in the world now. Earlier it was not taken seriously. When British came to India, they taught us language, English language, that we should be able to work for them. Because they had a lot of work. The clerks, they need clerks. And they need illustrator. They open art school and trained them trained all the peop uh, students coming to their needs. So that influence is a natural influence by the government of the British Empire. And now our painters have become independent, they start thinking, and they're doing a lot of global uh, work, which is very international also. And some people going back to traditional thoughts. And my work, anything uh, is a, uh, any creative work, which is very good, it's global automatically. So I take a lot of things interna from internationally, you know, from the different, I uh, travel uh, different countries, seen the work in different museums, and uh, know about all the contemporary scenes, but I kept my tradition with that. Mm -hmm. I taken a lot of things from Prana, a lot of things from Sufi, and though I'm working on the uh, large painting on the Christ, Last Supper, and that's Asian, of course, Christ was Asian, I'm working, making him not Roman Christ, mm -hmm. making him Asian Christ. Mm -hmm. And similarly, uh, anything you do uh, with the excellence 
and with keeping your originality, I created my own figure. And where I'll go, I went, I had a show in New, New York last year, last to last year, I think maybe this year, at the beginning. And, you know, took it there. I said, who will carry such a large painting since I'll arrange it? Mm -hmm. And they were all sold. They're going to museum also. Smith, Smithsonian has two paintings, mm -hmm. and they're taking our, our art seriously. Mm -hmm. It was not this only has been a, a, a sort of a, um, a process of uh, debate and an and, and argument on the intrinsic value of art. Yeah. Um, you know, value of, of art is not merely uh, measured in terms of what someone is willing to pay for it, and frequently those are, in, those are made as investments. Uh, what is the value of art in a community, in a society? You know, you've, you've talked about, you know, how art was, uh, in the Indian tradition, was close to the people. You were telling me about how television has, in fact, uh, intruded on, on you know, many domestic arts, things that people Craft. would do with their hands and yeah, fingers yeah. and crafts. Uh, why are these so important? What is their value? Value of the art is a, basically, a other kind of need, apart from eating mm -hmm. or sleeping or doing anything. You, why people like to travel, why they want to see a Khujuraho or Kunark or El that is in Kutub Minar to the Taj Mahal, to all these architecture, I'm giving example, in a lot of places, temples, mm -hmm. and they go temple for religious reason, mm -hmm. and also the people, uh, places like Kunark or mm -hmm. uh, Khujuraho, they are not, uh, they are not religious anymore, people go to see it, they just go to see the art, it's a need of, inner need of people. What is the value of uh, you know, art, why should we spend all the money and energy and, and, and saying, look, it's really important to preserve our crafts. I mean, in the sense that uh, the computer, you know, the typewriter replaced handwriting and, and, and the computer has finally sort of put the, put the seal, as it were, on, on handwriting. You know, so what? Well, it doesn't matter if people don't need art mm -hmm. and they can reproduce on the computer. Mm -hmm. Computer is a wonderful language. Mm -hmm. Have you thought of uh, exploring computer art? Uh, no, mm -hmm. because I'm very happy with I, what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. You can't uh, replace a singing tomorrow. Mm -hmm. If you replace it also, mm -hmm. but it will be still done by the human mind. Mm -hmm. And similarly, the painting will be done human mind. Mm -hmm. And if computer can sing for you, mm -hmm. but it will still use human. Mm -hmm. So human is very important. Mm -hmm. And computer keep on changing, mm -hmm. but also music keep on changing. We like to have the musician. We like to have the painters, mm -hmm. to even to give the aesthetic sense to the computer, you need painters, mm -hmm. designers. You, you talked about the human mind and yeah. art. Yeah. Uh, when does a, a well-crafted painting yeah. become art? What are the qualities that, that elevate it from, from workmanship yeah. and, and precision and control? It's a wonderful uh, question and very uh, uh, technically, you are putting very beautifully. I like to reply it because craft, mm -hmm. every art has a craft. Mm -hmm. From uh, singing to even playing, is a lot of craft involved. Mm -hmm. And when it has a magic quality, mm -hmm. it enters into the magic, mm -hmm. then it becomes the art. Mm -hmm. And I'm talking very short way. Mm -hmm. Like you can draw a tree like a photograph, mm -hmm. and can be rigid. But you can do like a Zen master, mm -hmm. maybe doing one stroke, or you can do it like Manjit Baba when he paints a human figure, it has its own figure, not the figure which camera can take. Mm -hmm. And my own spaces, I use a lot of flat ground, I mm -hmm. try to create so much space in the painting, mm -hmm. which camera or television or film even don't have that much space. Mm -hmm. So I add into it, then it becomes the art. Mm -hmm. And it's on the edge, it works on the very edge. It can be craft, it mm -hmm. could be art, mm -hmm. it could be lesser art, mm -hmm. and maybe uh, sometimes it's just walking on the tight rope, mm -hmm. sometimes mm -hmm. this side, sometimes that side. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You have been through uh, art school uh, in India, and you had spoken about how these art schools are really in some ways started by the British and represented their philosophies and their ideologies for art. Uh, how important has that process of uh, formal training in art been for you? It's a, not a great training, that's I felt at that time. I would not spend a whole day in school sitting and doing a Roman sculpture and copying it. Mm -hmm. 
I'll do very fast the drawing of it and go out for sketching and for landscape mm -hmm. and to be in nature mm -hmm. and uh, no changing. In Broda they done wonderful experiment mm -hmm. and they used to bring every month once I went there, every month one a, a traditional craftsman, a master craftsman sitting mm -hmm. and he's doing the painting, people watching and things are changing now in India. Mm -hmm. It's not like people are interested in doing uh, like the Britishers. There's a lot of young painters coming with the new ideas and people in my uh, age group also, mm -hmm. they came out with their new kind of vision. Mm -hmm. Like Ganesh Pine or Jagin, so the this is my uh, almost slightly senior my age, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and myself Hawakar Kurte is, mm -hmm. is in Bombay painter is very abstract, mm -hmm. abstract is not doesn't belong to uh, Europe. Mm -hmm. Our thoughts are very abstract, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm? and he's doing Indian kind of abstract painting. Swami J. Swami Nathan was one of the most important important thinker and painter. He played a decisive uh, role in your life. Very much because he was a great a thinker on art on life also mm -hmm. and we spent almost 15 years together mm -hmm. that evening I'd go there mm -hmm. to meet him sometimes he was in Bhopal mm -hmm. and go to see him in Bhopal also. Mm -hmm. What did you learn from him? What was the sort of learning <coughs> uh, you know both as artist as human being and, and uh, an artist as a creator? First thing I learned from him he was very gentle, was so gentle he would drive with me, he would never drive, he sit in my car. When we are driving he would keep on telling slow, koi bacha ara hai, Some, let's look at the cat, look at the dog. Mm -hmm. And it took him a long time to realize I'm also very careful about these things. Mm -hmm. And as a, a, he loved humanity and was very aware about the country's uh, mm -hmm. uh, problems also. Mm -hmm. he, will call me anytime, mm -hmm. even when the emergency came mm -hmm. in India. Mm -hmm. He was one of the person who fought against it, you know, mm -hmm. with all these uh, poets and mm -hmm. writers were arrested. Mm -hmm. He was left out thinking artists can't be very mm -hmm. mm, harmful. Mm -hmm. But you know, I was, uh, my name was there, his name was there. Mm -hmm. Anything happened when he reacts, mm -hmm. when they uh, blame Hussain, that uh, is painting and is not proper, Durga not properly covered. Mm -hmm. it, people do not understand our culture. They are mm -hmm. illiterate who attacks on him, uh, attacks his hand for this sort of thing. He's a very religious man. He has a lot of respect for mm -hmm. uh, every cult uh, religion of India. He knows it. Mm -hmm. And he was the first person who said, just sign on the paper and give it to the newspaper. Mm -hmm. And he'll make me to run around, you know, mm -hmm. have the signature of the artist. Mm -hmm. And even to the Lord uh, Rudita, mm -hmm. when they broke Babri Masjid, then he mm -hmm. first man to mm -hmm. write that Mr. Narasimha Rao should resign. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's really would, sort of. To learn that um, uh, do, do you see uh, an artist then also in this role as a social activist, a social conscience, and not just a personal visionary? This is something that, that has been said about you that uh, you know you are far more a personal visionary and, and then concerned with the social aspects of art. Uh, you know you did of course uh, you know, for the record during this you know, following the Sikh riots in, uh, in the 80s you went out there and you empathized with that and you expressed that in some of your uh, I do uh, not work. express so much in painting it's a very slow process with me mm -hmm. but I like to work mm -hmm. but much more than me mm -hmm. there are other painters like Vivan Sundram he's very very active in uh, socially mm -hmm. about it. He spent a lot more time mm -hmm. and, I, and uh, also does beautiful installation. I respect mm -hmm. him for that. But anytime uh, they need me, mm -hmm. I go physically mm -hmm. to work with the mm -hmm. same or many, any, any organization when they need me mm -hmm. for, for my country, for the cause of human. Mm -hmm. Like I did a uh, painting for Menka mm -hmm. uh, once an auction to buy a van for animals to carry do dogs or mm -hmm. dead cats. Uh, Your painting has, it has this interesting uh, a relationship between animals and human beings, uh, sort of almost asking the question as to um, how and, and, and why and in what manner might all sentient beings uh, share the same space. Um, do you have a special relationship with animals, do you have 
pets or uh, what what triggers this off one thing is by in my uh, grace of god as born in goshala mm-hmm. it doesn't make me krishna or ranja <laughs> but my father was a great animal lover uh-huh. and he shifted his house and uh-huh. built his house in the goshala uh-huh. because he was timber merchant he was an ample of time uh-huh. and uh, was wonderful treating cows uh-huh. but he has horses also in those days there in 19 uh, 10 or 1915 he used to ride horses mm-hmm. and uh, for going one place to other place and i also had dog always with me and apart from that in delhi when delhi was not crowded we used to have cow or buffalo at home so mm-hmm. i had a lot of association with the animals mm-hmm. and apart from that i am in front with the a uh, culture you know the feeling of my country where i tell you when i was young boy first time i seen durga puja happening in devnagar government quarters it was a big ground it's not that big it used to look very big earlier to me and they're making durga image and what a beauty you know for me young boy looking at a sculptor making from nowhere to you know, starting from scratch mm-hmm. and suddenly in front of me i spend a lot of time coming mm-hmm. eating and then sitting there mm-hmm. and beautiful images come mm-hmm. with a lion and mm-hmm. the mm-hmm. beautiful woman you know mm-hmm. and who's so close to the goddess mm-hmm. and that impact remain with me looking at kali puja and uh, i'm very happy i'm talking very strong hindu mm-hmm. being a sikh and because sikh hindu are two people mm-hmm. they are same people mm-hmm. every human living in india Indian Christians are different than the European Christians mm-hmm. Indian Muslim are different than the Pakistani Muslims mm-hmm. we are all Indian mm-hmm. and i used to love the, seeing all that mm-hmm. and everywhere you see in our uh, god and goddesses mm-hmm. we have a animal attached to it mm-hmm. Shiva has a bull mm-hmm. and Krishna all the time with the cows surrounded with the cows mm-hmm. and uh, Garuda has a uh, Vishnu has a garud mm-hmm. and think of any god kartik has a, mm-hmm. a peacock mm-hmm. and uh, goddess durga has a lion tiger and they were not by chance made iconography they thought of environment to love animals mm-hmm. to be with them they are part of nature mm-hmm. otherwise they won't worship suddenly people tree and bird tree mm-hmm. they are very careful about in villages people are more careful about the their greenery mm-hmm. you've mentioned this aspect that uh, uh Christians in India are uniquely Indian and Muslims in India are uniquely Indian what is this indianness this environment this environment is like that mm-hmm. people uh, i was watching a program once in sitting in england a nun coming into the television and talking about they keep uh, we keep uh, fast once a week Mm-hmm. and the european english uh, nun was telling you are talking like a hindu she said mm-hmm. we're well, talking like a human <laughs> mm-hmm. we mm-hmm. are so many people hungry in our country mm-hmm. in the world mm-hmm. we save mm-hmm. just a indian thought enters gradually mm-hmm. don't think only we are we have lot of killing here mm-hmm. there and fighting with people mm-hmm. these are critical mm-hmm. basically they all critical things have happened mm-hmm. but people still love each other mm-hmm. you have um, many sort of um interests and 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 engagements as it were in different uh, uh areas of artistic endeavor um uh, you've been associated um with the theater you've dabbled a little bit with uh, film posters uh you you have a a, a range of uh, interest in the arts beyond being a painter uh, is there something that happens because you feel in some ways painting limits you i I think uh, no printing doesn't limit me mm-hmm. but i have to express through posters which i am expert on silk screen printing mm-hmm. if such is there a retrospective happening in delhi mm-hmm. and i get chance to do poster for him mm-hmm. i think uh, i will feel myself very fortunate as great mm-hmm. master of our country mm-hmm. and doing a show in delhi and if i get a chance to do poster for him why not mm-hmm. and ritu ghatak when you are showing as a great admirer of ritu ghatak mm-hmm. Uh, being a, a Punjabi, I could understand Bengali because of mm-hmm. seeing these films and mm-hmm. uh, uh, reading bit of mm-hmm. you know, having a lot of friends. Mm-hmm. And 
But to see that culture by its masters, mm -hmm. and you feel to dedicate yourself some bit to these mm -hmm. people, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. it's part of art actually. Poster making is part of mm -hmm. art, mm -hmm. and the Sufi music because I'm interested in Sufi, mm -hmm. and 84 riots when we come home back home, mm -hmm. and after working in the camps, you can't imagine. You, I'm sorry, you might have seen it yourself, mm -hmm. and uh, the position was so bad, so pathetic. If I tell you a story. Mm -hmm. I don't want to disturb people. They will be disturbed for many years. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't want to mm -hmm. even talk about it. It will shake people. Mm -hmm. And then you, I'll come back home mm -hmm. with a friend of mine mm -hmm. who was also in danger. Mm -hmm. They could have, could have killed. I saved him somehow. Mm -hmm. And I told him, you can't hide yourself. We have to work mm -hmm. for the people who are displaced. Mm -hmm. And they, all the men died, only women are there, the children are there mm -hmm. to arrange clothes for them, there were blankets mm -hmm. for them. And it was done by a, a certain organization, we joined them. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's over your, your moral duty mm -hmm. if something happens wrong in your country. Mm -hmm. And uh, you have to work for it mm -hmm. as a human. Mm -hmm. You can't be selfish only sitting in the one dark room and then putting strong lights and keep on painting, mm -hmm. you have social moral duty to work for your country. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So tell me that in terms of this... Um I was telling about the singing, we'll come back home and we're so depressed and we start singing. Mm -hmm. And I we explore my friend Madan Gopal mm -hmm. and uh, Ranbir Kalika's home. Mm -hmm. And other lady was there, Mrs. Vinod Bihari Mukherjee. And the very elderly, mm -hmm. so she'll join us, mm -hmm. and we start singing. Mm -hmm. And I bought a dhap then, I bought a dhol and a harmonium, mm -hmm. and we keep on singing at evening. Mm -hmm. And then we start exploring more and more. I became more interested in it. It's a relaxation also, mm -hmm. and also beautiful music. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What is it that uh, music gave you that painting didn't in that moment of crisis? Because painting takes a long time to express and Sufi poetry or any beautiful poetry and music gives you immediate mm -hmm. uh, soothing feeling. Mm -hmm. So do you feel in your next incarnation you might consider being a musician? Well, I won't mind if I become a musician or a poet or a painter, but still a part of art. It's still a kids of Saswati. Mm -hmm. I will be her. One of the she she can put me anywhere. Uh -huh. Manjit Baba, thank you very much. That's been a great privilege. Thank you. Thank you.